So, Rebecca, technically not classified as debt, but how problematic could this be? Absolutely. So the real concern here, of course, is that even though Evergrande has done taken really significant steps to reduce its debt load, that these IOUs, they're also called commercial papers, um, that they effectively are adding to the debt load and have become, in fact, perhaps an alternative form of fundraising for the firm. So Evergrande has about 32 billion of these, um, significantly more than other major Chinese developers as well. Um, and of course, there is this fundamental question about, you know, how do investors actually read the balance sheet when it comes to Evergrande? And that even though Evergrande has met one of these three red lines, it still could be trying to juggle what is effectively sort of short-term issues or short-term debt uh, in other parts of its balance sheet. So when it comes to what comes next, right, is there a sense that we're going to see further restrictions from the government? I mean, that's really the, the fundamental question here. And investors certainly are asking whether or not these account payables um, will start to be included in the three red lines. Um, and, and if that's the case, I mean, Evergrande would certainly face significant challenges. And what we've seen, of course, is even though the sort of debt part of its balance sheet has sort of pared back um, the account payables, that, that total liabilities, that's really, really uh, arisen over the, last, over the last year or so. Um, and really fundamentally we're seeing a lot of doubt from investors around what's going to happen with this chunk of debt. The bonds are sinking um, much, much faster than we saw back in September. Um, so really a lot of, lot of concern for the company.